You might be able to avoid hip surgery and stop your hip pain just by doing these simple exercises and making small changes to your movement and exercise habits. Let me show you what you should not be doing and what exercises to do instead. Hello, my name is Daniel Lawrence. Welcome to the Physio channel. This is a video for people suffering from hip pain here. It targets a specific condition called hip impingement or femoroacetabular impingement. We call it FAI for short. The simple advice and exercises in this video have helped many of my patients reduce hip pain and avoid surgery. So this condition can be caused by the hip joint jamming against itself when you flex your hip. Let's have a look at why. It can be caused by the shape of your ball or by the depth of your socket. This is called a cam deformity and this is called a pincer deformity. Now, arguably, they're not actually deformities, just variations in bone shape. And this is known because many people can have these variations in bone shape, the cam and the pincer, without actually having any hip pain symptoms. So if you have that cam or pincer shape in your hip, it may have been there for some time. And something that you've recently started doing may be the reason for your hip pain. Therefore, if we can identify what that might be, we can reduce or stop your hip pain and reduce the need for surgery. Let's have a think about what that might be. The first one could actually be this position here, squats, particularly deep squats. Going down into that position flexes the hip to a maximal degree and may cause some aggravation. Let's have a think about some other things that you might be doing which are causing that hip pain that you could stop or modify to make your symptoms improve. Before we move on, it would be useful for you to know the movements which aggravate hip impingement. Let's do a test. Lie on your back. Decide which hip you want to test first. Bring the hip up into flexion and use your arms to flex the hip up, bringing the knee towards the chest. Then bring the knee over towards the opposite hip so that your thigh is being taken across your body. The third part involves holding the lower limb and twisting the leg so that the knee is twisting inwards and the foot is being pulled outwards. This test is called the Fadia test because we have flexion, adduction across the body and internal rotation of the leg. Do that and then pull the knee up so that it's heading towards the opposite shoulder. Now you'll notice when you do this that it is squashing the groin. If you have hip impingement, it's very likely that this Fadia test will cause some pain over the front of the hip. So now you know the movements that cause the hip impingement to be aggravated. And they are excessive flexion, bringing the leg across the body, such as sitting cross-legged, for example, so don't do that, and also internal rotation. Any one of those or a combination of those will likely aggravate your hip pain. So have a think about some of the things which you may be doing which could be causing that aggravation. They come in three different categories. Category number one is postures and positions that you sit in for a prolonged period of time, like this one. Or it could be an exercise that you're doing with weight, with load, so some form of weight training exercise, like the squat that I looked at earlier, and we'll be returning back to that again in a moment. And the third one is something that you're doing with repetition. So remember I was on a bicycle earlier, on a bicycle, if your seat is too low, you'll be repetitively flexing the hips and that may be causing some aggravation. So increasing the seat height on the bicycle could make a significant difference and allow you to ride the bike without any pain or discomfort. Again, we'll have a closer look at that in a moment. One thing that you may be struggling with is fitting shoes and socks. So here's three things to do when you're fitting your shoes to avoid aggravating your hip. Number one, loosen the laces. Number two, when you flex your hip, turn your hip out to open the hip up and don't have your hip in like so. So hip out, flex the hip, pop the foot in the shoe, and then to avoid having to reach forwards if that aggravates your hip, get something like a shoehorn. Here I've just grabbed a ruler which is gonna suffice. Pop that in and that will allow you to fit your shoe. And then to tie up the laces, make sure you turn the knee out to open up the hip and you can then tie the laces from there. Okay, next we'll think about chairs, stools, car seats, and sofas. If your seat is too low, you will have to naturally flex your hips and that may cause some discomfort. So very simply, 
try to avoid sitting in low seats. If you have to sit in a low seat and you find yourself in a scenario where you just have to sit on a low stool or step, then don't keep your knees together because that will keep your hips quite closed. Open your knees, widen your stance, open up your hips and then sit down from there. That's gonna be much more comfortable. When you're sitting and resting, the worst position would be to have your legs crossed and leaning forwards. The best position would be to have the aggravated hip out. So the hip is open and you're slightly leaning back. This will keep your hip in a comfortable position. But whenever you can, try to choose higher seats or raise the seat. Remember the example on the bicycle earlier as well. In the car, see if you can adjust the car seat to reduce hip flexion and open up your car seat as long as you're still in a comfortable and safe driving position, then that may make all the difference. So seats, sofas and stools, avoid the low ones, but if you must sit in the low ones, make sure you keep your hip as open as possible. Okay, here's some exercise advice. When you're doing squats, have a wider stance and just go part way down, halfway down for example, and that will still be a great exercise and a great workout for your lower limbs without worrying about going all the way down and trying to get ass to grass as they call it that is likely to be irritating your hips. So rather than not squatting at all, just go part way down. It will still give you a great workout, improve the strength of your lower limb muscles and avoid aggravating your hips. When it comes to lifting activities such as deadlifts, there's a few things you can do. And one of them is to have the bar a little bit higher. The other of course is to have your hips open. As you can see, I've got a wider stance here. By taking your shoes off, it will drop you down a little bit, effectively making the bar a little bit closer to you. So that will help. Make sure that your weight plates, you choose the larger ones to help lift the bar up towards you. And if necessary, you could pop something under the weight plates, once again, to lift the bar up towards you. So once you're able to drop down to a comfortable position, instead of a classic deadlift where your knees are closer together and you're gonna be lifting like so, you'll probably find it more comfortable if you have the wider stance and bring your hands in between your knees like so. So just remember, simple strategies, have a wider stance to open up your hips and don't drop down as far, reduce the range of motion, you'll still have a great workout, have all of the strength and conditioning and fitness benefits, but you won't be aggravating your hip, which ultimately could be something which would stop you doing the exercise. So you can keep training just with some simple activity modifications. So I've mentioned the bicycle seat a couple of times, having the seat at the right height so you don't have any unnecessary hip flexion. But another thing to think about is the style of bike that you're riding. So if you're in a racer on a road bike, you're gonna be tucked down into this position and that causes, as you can see, more hip flexion. Whereas if you're in a more upright position, as you might be on a mountain bike, this is going to involve less hip flexion and is therefore probably going to be more comfortable and preferred by people that have hip pain and hip impingement symptoms. Returning back to cars, let me tell you a funny story because I want to hear your comments on this. I had a patient who had a sports car and it was getting in and out of that sports car that caused them considerable hip pain. They were okay getting in and out of their other vehicles and they could do many other things, but it was the sports car that was particularly troublesome. So they said to me, they feel as if they need to make a decision, sell the sports car or have hip surgery pretty much to be able to get into the sports car. So what would you do if you were in that scenario, if you had to have hip surgery to get into your sports car? Would you sell the sports car or would you have the hip surgery to keep the sports car? Let us know in the comments what you might do in such a ridiculous situation. Let's move on. Here's another top tip for you. If you're experiencing the hip pain at night, place one or two pillows between your knees when you're lying on your side, as this puts your hip into better alignment and can reduce the hip impingement. It's a simple thing. But from experience, it can make a significant difference to your night's sleep. So I hope it helps. Give us a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Follow me into the next video to learn three exercises for hip pain and impingement. If you'd like to learn more about the assessment and management of hip impingement, then I have an online course which should be linked on the screen here and also in the description below. We'll see you in the next video.